for staying with us and in case you're just joining us you are right on time for our gold conversation and today we do want to discuss all matters use of renewable energy sources more so solar energy and to shed more light on that we do have with us in studio mr vincent okuna who is an engineer by profession thank you so much for making time to be with us today on the program karibu sana kenya's gold thank you all right nam uh, asante sana victor okuna kwa kukubali kujiunga na sisi swali la kwanza wakati mimi nachagua solar pump kule Shambani nitaangaliaje ekari ya shamba ambalo niko nalo na itafana namna gani na hiyo solar well, the first thing you need to check ni how much water you need for a day kila siku unataka maji kiasi gani mm. ni ujue kila siku unataka maji kiasi gani unajua ni nini unataka kupanda or what do you want to irrigate because there are also the various ways of irrigation uh, so first of all you look which kind of irrigation i'm going for if it is drip if it is furrow because the amount of water a furrow need is totally different with the amount of water a drip irrigation needs so the farmer has to be uh, has to make a choice that i'm going for a furrow irrigation right then for a furrow irrigation is just pouring water So you do a furrow here, pour water, ikija, it goes to the next. Mm -hmm. So you realize that the amount of water a farmer will need for a furrow irrigation mm -hmm. may be actually 10 times of what wow. a drip irrigation guys will need. Mm -hmm. So two, you now go to how much, I mean, what is the size of the land you're gonna have? Because mm -hmm. someone with a one hectare may need less water than someone with five acres or 10 acres. Mm -hmm. So the farmer must also know that I have one acre to irrigate right. or i have four acres to irrigate mm -hmm. so the moment you know i have this amount of acres to irrigate now i'm going for this kind of irrigation if it is furrow yeah. or it is uh, drip, drip. Mm. so take for example if it is furrow uh you say that you have two acres of water for a furrow irrigation a furrow you may even plant uh, maize or anything else like that mm -hmm. or even tomatoes so for tomatoes or far, uh, for a farrow you may for two acres you may do close to 50,000 liters mm -hmm. so you once That's you identify 50,000 liters per per day uh -huh. so if you know that you need 50,000 liters of water per day mm -hmm. uh, because you are going to use solar you have to pump it for six hours or seven hours right depending on the region where you are mm -hmm. there are some regions where this this sun hours for eight hours mm -hmm. then there are also some regions where there's sun hours for even less than five hours mm -hmm. so you also need to know your region right. actually from professional solar professional they are able to guide the the, the farmer mm -hmm. that the area in nairobi the area in wajia mm -hmm. or the area in eldoret mm -hmm. has specific peak hours mm -hmm. so if you need eight hours i mean 50 cubic liters of water per day mm -hmm. then you identify a an area like let's say Masi that is a that's in Machakos mm -hmm. then Masi probably will have seven hours of sun it is not 12 of hours it doesn't mean that when the sun sets in at six or seven then you start pumping water now there's something called peak hours mm -hmm. when your solar is giving you a hundred percent of what supposed was it is designed for right. so if you have 50 cubic meters of water you need a day and you need to pump it for six or seven hours, mm -hmm. then you have 50,000 divided by six. So that one gives you around seven cubic meters of water per hour. Oh, right. So now the pump you need should give you 7,000 liters of water and how. Right. So that is what, that's the first fundamental. Then two, you have to look at where is the source of water and where is your farm? If your source of water is near the river or just bounding a river, mm -hmm. then it is not far. You may talk of maybe 10 meters ahead. Mm -hmm. But if your farm is two kilometers away, mm -hmm. then you'll have to take the coordinates, and that is very important. You take the coordinates of the highest point of your farm, and then the coordinates of the river or the source of water. The coordinates will now give you the vertical distance. Actually, all pumps mm -hmm. works on the vertical head, not the horizontal. You can even pump water from Mombasa up to here, mm -hmm. but what the pumps will check is that the, the point where we are here in Royal Media mm -hmm. and the point where we are taking the, the, the water in Mombasa, mm -hmm. what is the vertical distance between those two locations? Right. So those two vertical distances in meters. Mm -hmm. So you go to the pump curve, he's a professional engineer or a technician, mm -hmm. will go to the pump curve and now see 
I need seven cubic meters of water per hour with a head of maybe 200 meters from where this, uh, the, soil, uh, the, the, the river is to where your farm, your farm is. Just uh, before you continue, I mean, that um, breakdown needs to be done by a very... A competent. Yeah, competent. like a professional person. A farmer yeah. will not have all that information. Me, I turn a node, like I'm nodding. Mm. But now, that I, I believe that's the same case with a farmer. So yeah. mm. we have a challenge of quacks, quacks in the market. And that's one of the reasons as to why a lot of people are discouraged from even from embracing solar, solar mm. energy. So when I'm getting into this, how do I identify that I am working, first of all, with the right professional? vizuri. And then now, because you're talking about water pumps, what also determines Nachukua solar panel abayo ikona kiasi gani? Uyu wana irrigate, uyu mwingine maybe yake ni ya kufanya tu drying, mwingine yake ni ya home consumption. What determines those and how do I tell apart professionals and quacks in the market? That, that, that's a very good question. Uh, solar, like, just like any other business, mm -hmm. can be categorized into two. Mm -hmm. You can do solar as a business mm -hmm. and you can do solar as a service. Mm -hmm. Business can be done by anyone. So long as you have money, you can go buy and go install. That is business. Mm -hmm. Actually, 90% of what we have in the rural homes are done by business people. Mm -hmm. Someone who said, I saw this one done somewhere, and I can do it. Mm -hmm. I can copy paste. Mm -hmm. And he has some money, mm -hmm. and he can go to the Facebook or anywhere else, mm -hmm. post what someone else did or he did. Mm -hmm. And then you, as a client, because you have no knowledge, mm -hmm. you go and say, this guy give me a good price. Because definitely a quack will give you lesser price. Mm -hmm. So you say, let me save 50,000 and get Violet. And because she's giving me a better price, I go try. Hey, so that is. <laughs> <laughs> but let's continue. <laughs> yeah, let's continue. Yeah. You are. Hey, yo. I'm a hey, yo. So uh, uh, definitely that is what is really a uh, the biggest challenge in the solar industry. So 90% mm -hmm. of those guys dealing with solar are doing it in business form. Mm -hmm. Even the importers, starting from the importers, you have enough money. So you can import a container of solar you can import a container of palms. So you are doing business. And because you started selling and someone approaches you as the seller, as the importer, definitely you will give him or her at the cheapest price. So instead of going through a professional engineer or anybody else who will also do a markup, you will prefer to go and buy directly from the importer, maybe get another quack somewhere in the market or in the, in the village, then install for you. I can, I can tell you that it will, it will be cheap. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the two or one year, mm -hmm. you'll be crying in the <laughs> mm. you'll be crying about a million or five hundred thousand or even millions of money that have gone into waste. So right. what we really need to do mm -hmm. that we don't need to do business when it comes to energy. Mm -hmm. We need to do a service right. when it comes to energy. Right. And even not even solar, any any other thing, even if it is electricity, mm -hmm. the moment you start having business vis a vis a service, and you know a service comes with a fee. That service fee might be expensive at the beginning, but very important for the durability and functionality of your solar system. Right. Yeah. Right. Then we were talking about now the how do you know that uh, I may need this is a solar panel. Uh, I need two, I need three, I need 20, I need 50. Mm -hmm. So solar panels have ratings, different ratings. Like this is a 200 watts, mm -hmm. they will be 350, they can be 450. 600 up to 700 or something. Mm -hmm. Initially, when it started, we just had 100 and, 20, 100, 100 and 200 because of the technology. Mm -hmm. In 10 years ago, we didn't have bigger solar panels. But as the efficiency, the solar cell, mm -hmm. if you look, look at this, this is a cell. At the moment, when we started, the solar cell efficiency was less than 12%. Mm -hmm. Today, we are thinking about a solar cell which is more than 25%. So therefore means for a small area like one meter square, uh, what was there in 10 years ago, it will be a very big solar, but giving you less energy. Uh -huh. But when the efficiency increases, then you'll have a small solar panel uh -huh. giving you a, a good amount of energy. Right. So the moment you now uh, say that I have, like where I stopped, I have seven cubic, and uh, the distance, the vertical distance from my, uh, from my river mm -hmm. or the source of water mm -hmm. to my farm is, let's say, 200 meters. Mm -hmm. Then you go to what you call a pump curve mm -hmm. to identify the pump that will give you that water at that head. Mm -hmm. 
So assume that you have gotten a pump of, let's say, 5.5 uh, kilowatts. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the, maybe that's the language you can hear. Okay. So if you have a 5.5 kilowatts, that's a 7.5 horsepower. Most of us. Kido, wacha tu shikile apa tu kredi ata fana vizuri kavisa utueleze. Lakini ntaka lugha mbaya ni raisi saidi kwa yule mkuu lima mbaya na kusikiliza nyumbani bila shaka mtazamaji mbaya una tu fuatilia tu na hakikisha kwamba tu na kufunza kwa lini posa tu na mambi ya lugha mbaya tayi tu mbe basi tu kredi ya yule raisi kwa jili yako tu na kwenye mapumziko ni to kirejea kungali kuna mengi usikwende popote usi mbonyeze kidubu wa shichako sarea na sese Okuna talking so much about renewable energy sources and solar panels are here with us in the studio. Lakin to mesema all that complication ya hapo mwanzo, a farmer just needs to make sure that they are getting a professional. Yeah. The cost will be high, but worth it. Yeah, worth it. Yeah, so anasema cheap is expensive <laughs> at the end of the day. See ya. Yeah. All right. So talk to us about your storage. There's the whole storage aspect of um, solar energy. And there's the batteries. Na kuna watu badu analia beti ile kwa soko ni fake. So talk to us about... Um, good batteries, why you need the battery, you know, shamba, kwa talk to us about that. Uh, battery is basically for storage. Mm -hmm. So uh, the solar is only for, like you said, peak hours, it can be eight hours, seven hours, or six hours. Mm -hmm. So you have a home setup where you need power through the night towards the following day. Mm -hmm. So it therefore means you need a backup. That's what we call a battery. Actually, the technology has gone very much higher and very fast from uh, before we had flooded batteries where you added acid in the water mm -hmm. then we, go, we went to uh, a sealed mm -hmm. free maintenance mm -hmm. and actually today we have uh, lithium so the difference between those batteries of kitambo and batteries asai is what we call life cycle life cycle is that you drain it in Asia, then unajaza so ni kama umeenda kukunywa kidogo so unajaza glass you drink it in Aisha, unaomba ingine. So for lithium batteries, you are able to drain it, we jazz it, we drain it almost 6,000 times mm -hmm. before it gets dest destroyed. Mm -hmm. But for the older models, you are only able to drain it maybe 1,000 times. So 1,000 times, if you have a year going for 360 years, uh, the days, you talk of around three years. Or three, yeah. Uh, yeah, around three years. Yeah, true. But when you talk about 6,000 cycles, you talk around more than 10 years. So right. that is why the lithium batteries are very important when you are going for home backup. Mm -hmm. Actually, at the moment, if you have a client who is looking for solar, mm -hmm. you don't even need to think of old batteries. Just tell your, uh, your, your supplier mm -hmm. that I need lithium batteries because those are the durable batteries that may take you for maybe six or 10 years. Okay. Uh, about the issue of uh, quality. It's very difficult for a client like you to really uh, know that these batteries are not, are not uh, their qualities are, are not good. Mm -hmm. But definitely we have internet. Mm -hmm. We have internet. And I always tell the clients, if I supply you a product, there must be a model. Even this solar, there must be a model back it. The model, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Just take time because that is your uh, product. Take time and Google. Even before you buy, go to the internet and look at the various types of batteries you have or in the market. The good ones, uh, because in every battery, in every manufacturer, if you type it in your Google search, it will give you the, f the feedback from the clients. Mm -hmm. That a, a client from Germany, a, a client from Nairobi, say that I use this battery for these years and it is good. It is average or it is weak. So don't just go to, uh, to your supplier and tell him that you need a battery. Just ask. Which type of batteries do you have? Mm -hmm. Once I give you the model of the batteries, battery A, battery B, battery C, take time, go to the internet, and Google the types of batteries you have. Okay. Wakati mungine pia nina kuja kwa shamba, nataka kuinstaliwa. Sasa ndajua aje ni meinstaliwa vizuri na kutatokia wizi pia. Ah, that is now the best question because the wizi part is what has really made solar. People have been saying, let me leave solar a, 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 a bit because mm -hmm. I fear if, my, uh, if the river is maybe a kilometer away mm -hmm. and I'm living another one kilometer uphill, if I install solar there, they'll be stolen. And a number of solar, uh, solar systems, the institutions have lost solar into millions of shillings. Uh, the safety solar is very important. At home, you can install it anywhere. Mm -hmm. But when you, so, uh, when you install solar outside your home area, then your safety 
the security of your solar panels are very key. Mm -hmm. And we always say that uh, the major uh, contributor, the loss of solar panels, are use of angle lines to seal the solar. Mm -hmm. And uh, angle line, I think one of these is here. Mm -hmm. It's just like a very small one. This is uh -huh. this is an angle line. No, right. everyone knows it, right. and all the installers will use it. Uh -huh. So he picks an angle line. Once you've installed your solar systems, uh -huh. then you seal your solar with an angle line, like like that one. And then once you are done that, uh -huh. you have a stopper, or uh, you you mount this one here, uh -huh. thinking that you've really done something meaningful. Uh -huh. uh, a thief will just come with a bar. Mm -hmm. Then twist this piece oh. up oh. and then remove the solar panels mm -hmm. and go, go up with them. That is the simplest way to ensure that your solar panels are stolen within, within a, a month. And that one has happened to counties, institutions, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have solar panels mounted with, uh, with angle lines and sealed with angle lines, angle lines you can even decide if it is a smart thief you don't even need a, a disc stopper you may even decide it kuvunja e solar panel moja you know you have 20 solar panels yes you yeah. have 20 yeah. but the last one are the ones the that are sealed angle. so you can decide let me pull one yeah. if we, we, we vunja, then the rest you will just now pull within one hour you've pulled 20 panels and yeah. you've gone so the the solar panel uh, like this one Instead of using an angle line, mm. okay, even before we turn it, an angle line also in, a, in the usage. Solar panels are supposed to have what we call free cooling. Mm. Yes. Kwa sabi amda, daomba tu arakisha. Tu mm. arakisha. So maybe next time we'll come and explain the rest. Mm. Mm. An angle line will always, a solar panel is always mounted at an angle slanting so that when it rains like it has been dusty so it's want to rain today so those dust always makes a mud mm -hmm. when it rains they are they are always being cleaned so an angle line will always ensure that those dust form mud at the end of it and in two years you'll find that this cell at the lower side are already covered with mud so an angle line actually should never be used in securing your solar panel okay. so when you want to maybe secure your solar panel it's very easy mm. if you have if you have this one as your solar mm. You can just turn it like this. Mm -hmm. That's the, the rear side. Mm -hmm. So this rear side mm -hmm. has holes. All solar panels, whether it is 10 watts or 500 watts, they have these small holes here, mm. these ones. Yeah. So these small holes are actually for uh, security. Okay. So what you do is that you can use uh, a tube, a mm. tube or anything like that. So with your tube, uh, you have the tube running there, then you have a bolt, maybe eight millimeter size. Mm -hmm. It goes through the, uh, this side, mm. from the behind side. Mm. So once it goes through the behind side, mm. it comes out like this. Yeah. Then on your tube, it is welded on the tube. Mm. So you have a tube running across. If, there, if it is an array of 20 right. panels, then that is the surest way of ensuring that okay. if you install your solar panels in the river down there, 10 years, they are still there. Nashukuru sana bingwa maelezo mengi kabisa lakini labda wakati mwingine sasa mtazamaji tumefuatilia kwa sababu muda naomba kukamilisha nikisema hivi salia na Mwenyezi Mungu kumbuka tatimizo ndoto tutafaulu sana jina langu ni Emmanuel Tarar Thank you so very much Mr Victor we'll definitely have to further this conversation in another session lo malize kuelezea wakulima masuala ya solar energy Thank you so much for being with us all across the week we'll see you again next week with a lot more when it comes to all matters agriculture until then do have yourselves a fantastic weekend my name is Violet Angina goodbye